Clients would describe our work as being refined and sophisticated, but unassuming, not in a way that is unapproachable. People refer to us as sort of dark and moody, but with an elegance that comes with that. I think people hire us because they see our retail store and that sort of inspires and helps them to understand our aesthetic. A lot of our clients come from our retail shop. So I opened Dixon Rye eight years ago. Part of what I love about what we do is I'm able to do product design, I'm able to do interior design, and then my true passion of being a shop owner. And one of the things that I've sort of grown into over the years is the ability to travel the world and curate an assortment for the shop that is then later articulated into a customer's home. My name is Bradley Odom, and I am an interior designer and shop owner here in Atlanta, Georgia. We are in the beautiful Buckhead neighborhood of Atlanta, Georgia. We chose this project to showcase today because we think it really encompasses everything that we do. So there are pieces we designed, incorporated, our beautiful mitts of fabrics of texture and pattern, the location, really everything about this house sort of encompasses what we are and what we do um, within the firm. The homeowner of this project was really looking for someone to sort of come in with a new vision and a new idea for what the home could be that with the busy lifestyle of a real estate developer but with three young kids they wanted it to be a place where they could raise their family but have a, also be able to entertain clients when needed and I think when they reached out to us they knew that we were able to sort of bring that sophistication and elegance in that unassuming way. When we started this project, our clients sort of had an initial vision of taking the existing home that was here and adding on to it and renovating it. Um, so it really became a complete gut job. Um, they moved in the house next door. And so we were sort of to, able to take this to the studs. And with Brandon's help, we sort of re-envisioned what it is today. Part of the beauty of working with an architect on this project was that we were able to really collaborate in a way that not just on the bones of the structure, but also where furniture would land and, and where things would lay out. Hi, welcome to this beautiful home. Come on in. Here we are in the entrance way of this home where one of the pieces that we first found for this was before construction had even started. We were on one of our buying trips and found this really beautiful chest from the 20s and thought it would be sort of the hero of this space and, and really has become that. We surrounded it with a heavily smoked antique mirror here urban electric lighting, obviously a really beautiful antique rug. And we did lay the floors here on the diagonal. So sort of what you see a lot of times is a herringbone pattern or something like that. We just chose to go with a simple diagonal. And really, I think this becomes a space in this house that just feels inviting and welcoming, yet calming and sophisticated. We tend to incorporate a sort of an antique mirror, whether it be in something like a built-in like this with a beautiful grid pattern, or it be just decorative. This one is really heavily antiqued, uh, which we liked for this space. It almost feels like art, but there are many ways to do this from sort of a really light antiquing to this like heavily smoked. And you can do this too in sort of these silvery gray tones, or we've even done it in the past in sort of a bronzy gold tone. I didn't want it to feel like a mirror per se, as much as we did something that sort of felt like a wall covering.
Here we are in the living room. One of the things I love about this room is I think it sets the tone for the whole house. From the colors to the patterns and the texture that's incorporated. One of the things you'll see here is we started with this rug. I love this graphic pattern of this uh, Patterson Flynn Martin rug. And we were able to mimic the pattern on the ceiling in this space, which I think is really nice. We custom made the coffee table uh, with a local craftsman. And then the chairs, of course, are from Dixon Rye. And this is sort of a chair that we use in a lot of our projects. It has a really beautiful profile, but doesn't take up a big footprint. And we love a sitting area like this, especially when the chair swivels. It can be where you just enjoy a warm fire or a cocktail. We custom made this mirror here. This thing is heavy, but I think really sort of adds almost like an industrial part, which for me is just opposed to this sort of traditional space we're in. The drapery in this room is probably one of my favorite we've ever done. And there's no tricky detail here in regard to trim or mixing fabrics, but the weight and the way this Schumacher fabric, it's a wool, and but the way that this drapes is so beautiful and elegant. This is a piece that the homeowner had that's been passed down from generations. And we thought it was like the perfect spot to maybe just hide candles and things of that sort in here. We flanked it on each side with a beautiful ceramic piece from Michelle Kwan in Brooklyn. Some of the art incorporated into the space were things that the client owned that we were able to repurpose and uh, reframe but also mixed in with other art that we commissioned here in Atlanta with a local artist. The pieces over here, which I think sort of ground this side of the room so that both feel equally weighted, are from an artist in Texas, which I think I love the sort of simplistic but graphic moment you get here. One of the things we just love and I, incorporate into most all of our spaces as well as our retail store and even in my own home is the Paul Schneider lamps. I think Paul really gets and understands proportions better than anyone who makes lamps and they're just really beautiful and you get to pick your glaze and color and sort of match it back to whatever you're doing. Two other things I think are important in this space is sort of this idea. When you really look at this sort of modern form of this milking stool, which becomes sort of a modern piece for this room, but then you just oppose that to these lions that we found at the Paris flea market from the early 1900s. Just that whole juxtaposition of how that works together is sort of like our love language at Dixon Rye and, and things that we usually try to incorporate into rooms. When we think of a space with purpose and intention, it sort of becomes about the entire space, but also equally each individual element. Here, this room started with the rug. This beautiful piece from Patterson Flynn Martin, sort of a grid pattern, if you will. But we were like, how do we expand on that? And so for us, that became the opportunity to sort of this idea of like they were on top of each other of the ceiling and the rug and sort of this room evolved from that. But we took the rug pattern, sort of a tight grid, and deconstructed that with what I think, you know, not a lattice work feel, but sort of that same grid pattern is reflected here on the ceiling. And then we took that a little further by adding the pop of color as well. Here we are in the dining room, probably my favorite room in the entire house other than the kitchen. You don't need art here because the wallpaper is the art. This is this beautiful Cowton and Tout paper that we decided to use here. And we really went back and forth and we tried art pieces in here and it always just came back to like letting the wallpaper be the art. And I think that's what happened here. Custom made dining table that is able to add leaves to for when they're really entertaining with a large crowd. And we kept it very simple. A sculpture that is from Dixon Rye. Again, we incorporate a lot of these into our projects as well as my own home. The chairs here are all from 
Dixon Rye in Lancaster. And one of the things I love about them is this really beautiful pleat detail that we do on the back here in this really rusty colored Lux Velvet. The drapery here is sort of taking that same idea that we used in the other room, but this is linen with this really incredible trim detail that sort of frames up this entire space. We didn't really want your traditional buffet in terms of doors, but it felt like we could still get some storage in here as well as have a surface for hors d'oeuvres or, or buffet, whatever the occasion is. And we sort of love this idea of flanking it on one end. I think the sort of traditional expected thing to do is to take this buffet style lamp from Visual Comfort and flank it on both ends. I love them sort of pushed over here to create this sort of artistic moment. It's a custom made piece from Dixon Rye. We sell this daily with, you know, one sided as a chest, but we thought we loved the fluted design and we were able to sort of basically double the chest into this sort of dresser style that I think just sort of sinks in here uh, to the wallpaper into the room. So it's not a flashy sort of moment, but sort of just a subtle, really beautiful design piece. Here we are in the powder room of the main level and it's like a big pop of color, which we love. As you come in, you'll find this sort of like blushy pink. We started here with the wallpaper, this beautiful Kelly Wurstler graphic pattern. We custom designed the vanity with this sort of like marble again, sort of taking the idea of the top and incorporating it on the bottom and really beautiful details in here. We love this Urban Electric sconce. And then again, the homeowner's art, which they have a extensive collection of really beautiful pieces that we've sort of moved throughout the house. And then the ceiling detail here, I think is really nice because a lot of times I think the ceiling goes forgotten. And here you want to automatically look up and see what's happening here. So one of the challenges of a powder room when it opens up to this great outdoor space outside is it has to function. So you need some level of privacy here. For softness as well as privacy, we made this beautiful Roman shade in this gorgeous linen and then taped it off with a uh, sort of contrasting tape here, which allows you for the privacy you need as well as some softness in here. The kitchen for us is sort of the gift that keeps giving. It was published nationally in Traditional Home, and since then we've had countless phone calls and Instagram DMs and just comments about the color and how beautiful it is. And so it's this ferro and ball green smoke, and it really was informed from the property here. There's a pond outside the window that sort of reflect each other and complement each other in a way that creates this level of beauty that I think you see here. And in a time where there are a lot of white kitchens, we sort of took the opportunity to do something different and to sort of make a statement here. This kitchen looks as good now as it's going to in 10 years. It feels timeless, it feels classic, but yet sort of putting the gas to the pedal a little bit on innovation. The kitchens are a place in the home where I feel like they can start to be cluttered with your spices and all of those things. That we spent a lot of time on this particular kitchen with ensuring that things could easily be put away from sort of the garage uh, compartments that everyone loves for your toaster and your coffee. So those sort of flank this area here. You know, we made sure that we had places for your sponges with these, um, you know, little tucked away compartments here under the sink. One of the frustrations in my own home is the sink doesn't quite slope as much as it should. And I have found over the years that clients are very passionate about their sink. And I think a lot of times they are pieces that you think are just like really easy to spec, but the slope has to be right and incorporating the perfect slope line and a corner drain and things that like just make your life easier in a kitchen like this are really important. 
Um, we tucked away even the paper towels here, which I think is a really nice element uh, to ensure again that like all the things are sort of like away when you're not using them. Of course, we incorporated a wolf range. Some of the best appliances are throughout the house from the panel ready refrigerator Sub-Zero, of course. And uh, one of my other favorite elements in this house is the pantry. Where is it? It's here tucked away behind the door. So two entrances into the pantry here and on the other side. Right off of this beautiful kitchen is this really glamorous and sort of luxe feeling wet bar. Tucked away, but still sort of open, I would call it semi-private space. And this is where the magic happens in terms of making the cocktails and the afternoon beverage. And we did this in a high gloss Ferro and Ball Studio Green. And one of the things I love about it is it incorporates everything from coffee to fridge. Ice is built in here. And then you have drawers for storage, uh, as well as upper cabinets to really display all your beautiful glassware. One of the challenges of this room was that there was a window that looks to outside, which is really great because it really gives you this beautiful perspective of the nature surrounding the home but we really wanted the symmetry here. So we couldn't put a window here because behind here is the stairwell. So we sort of did a faux window with this mirror, which again, I think adds to the luxe and the glamor of the space because it gives you the reflection. Here we are in the keeping room, which is probably the most casual room of the house. It's the place where you're lounging and you're watching television, someone's in the kitchen cooking. So sort of that comfortable after work, uh, lounging and sort of watching television space here, but some really beautiful details. One of my favorite chairs to put in projects is the Blake chair from Varellen, available at Dixon Rye. I just love the modern curves of this. Of course, it swivels. Yeah, again, just opposed to this antique rug and right off of the breakfast nook with a table and chairs that the client already owned, but I think work perfectly in this space. And we purposely left all the windows on this side of the house untreated so that you really can take in all that nature. But in the keeping room here, we did incorporate these beautiful shears to sort of frame up this glass and steel door. Super lightweight, unlined, and I just think it adds a nice frame and it's on a track, which makes it super easy to uh, close off if you want a little more privacy. It's a great space that feels open and I feel like it's really just an extension of the kitchen. Right off of the keeping room is this beautiful outdoor space where we custom made pillows and a lot of the furniture we incorporated from the client's previous home, but it's all screened in and you've got your fireplace and your TV all overlooking the beautiful pond. Just a really great space, especially in the spring and in the fall of Atlanta, which can be really gorgeous. I love the space and I think it's just adds a whole nother level of comfort and casualness to the house. Before we headed to the primary bedroom, we're gonna pop into the study here and take a look. Here, it was all about warmth and cocooning. A space where you could, yes, enjoy some work at your desk or sit and read a book, have a cocktail. There are not a lot of pieces in here, but the pieces are powerful. So custom made desks from B10 here in Atlanta. Artwork that is like such a statement piece sold through Dixon Rye. Jim Thompson wallpaper, which I think really gives it that warmth. And then the really nice Holland and Sherry Roman shade. So you'll see that we use Roman shades a lot to sort of soften a space. And I think that this does a nice job of that here. We sort of took the trim and used a color that we use in Dixon Rye a lot, Hague Blue from Ferro and Ball. Just a really nice, beautiful blue that I love to incorporate into a lot of our projects.
As we head into the primary bedroom, we have this nice little vestibule of a moment here where we just took an opportunity to highlight some art that is owned by the client, along with some found pieces. I love a dark and moody bedroom. Without the use of wallpaper or fabric, the paint just gives you this sort of like, envelops you into this bedroom, makes for a nice calming place to sleep. All custom made bedding, and this is a bed that I designed called the Montgomery that I have in my own home. And this is made by Varellen. All the art uh, the client had, we just reframed it and sort of repurposed it. And we have an Italian mirror here above the fireplace in this little sitting area that I found in the south of France. Uh, again, swivel chairs for that nice moment where you just wanna put your feet up by the fire, maybe have your coffee in the morning. Custom made pillows with this beautiful DDR fabric, visual comfort lamps. And then this gorgeous Schumacher fabric, which we sort of like carried around the corner of this space overlooking the swimming pool. We make a lot of our pottery in Morocco and we have this series of pottery that we open the store with called Tadlock. And the vases have always been extremely popular for the shop, but a few years ago we decided to try some new forms. And so I designed what we call the bulb because we knew that we wanted to make it into lamps. And it's interesting because the Tadlock lamp now seems to find its way somewhere in every project but it's, the proportions are again great, super affordable, and just a really nice, easy lamp to incorporate. And here we sort of flanked each side of the bed with that. For anyone looking to get into antiquing, one of the things that I find is, yes, I love to peruse, whether it's a local flea market or whether it's the south of France. I love to just sort of peruse with this idea of like just letting something find me. But sometimes I do have a mission. That's what antiquing is, is it is really about finding something that matters and the story behind it and how you feel passionate about it because then I feel like you're really able to sort of pass that heritage and those stories on to other people. The primary bath, just a gorgeous, serene space overlooking the swimming pools. I think the idea of this sort of free-floating bathtub and being here in the evening overlooking the bathtub is just such a beautiful moment. We flanked this window with a, a very lightweight linen from Schumacher. And then these are the subtle details that we incorporate in with this contrasting tape. Uh, beautiful visual comfort lights as well as all the hardware from Matthew Quinn here in Atlanta, who just does a beautiful job and really gorgeous brass details of the faucets here, but lots of tucked away storage, even here on the sides, these little drawers, um, and then, you know, all of the typical vanity space that you find. Um, we incorporated this gorgeous antique rug that we found on one of our trips. I think it's a really nice uh, way, again, of that thread connecting the bedroom to this more sort of white and light and airy bathroom. As you pass through here, you have this really sweet spot for your makeup or vanity area. Really great tile detail in here that you see where we sort of did this trim piece around the center with this bull nose. Is a full steam shower, so that, that was very important to the client, but really gorgeous space. And then, to the sort of private quarters of your custom closet. The end result of this project is the fact that I wanna come back here so often. This is a home that I think most people I know 
would love to be a part of, and I love coming back to visit. Regardless of what room you're in in this home, there's sort of this level of curiosity that happens with some of the pieces throughout. I just think everything sort of comes back to like, this was a purposeful and intentional design.